Hello all, welcome to this video on Networking Lab. Today I'll be talking about configuring Telnet on switch and router in Cisco Packet Tracer. Let us begin by looking into what Telnet is. Telnet is an application layer protocol that allows a network administrator to access and manage remote devices. Telnet consists of two components. The first is the protocol itself, which specifies how two parties are to communicate and second is the software application that provides the service. User data is interspersed in band with Telnet control information in an 8-bit byte-oriented data connection over the TCP or transmission control protocol. Telnet was developed as secret technology in 1969 beginning with RFC 15, extended in RFC 855 and standardized as Internet Engineering Task Force, Internet Standard, STD-8, one of the first Internet standards. Telnet transmits all information including usernames and passwords in plain text, so it is not recommended for security-sensitive applications such as remote management of routers. This protocol is used to establish a connection to TCP or Transmission Control Protocol port number 23 or 2323 where a Telnet server application is listening. The Telnet protocol abstracts any terminal as a network virtual terminal or NVT. The client must simulate an NVT using the NVT codes when messaging the server. Telnet predated UDP IP and originally ran over NCP or network control protocol. NCP or Network Control Protocol was a communication protocol for a computer network in the 1970s and early 1980s. It provided the transport layer of the protocol stack running on host computers of the ARPANET, the predecessor to the modern Internet. Now the history of Telnet. Even though Telnet was an ad hoc protocol with no official definition until March 5, 1973, the name actually referred to Teletype Power Network Protocol as the RFC 206 or NIC 7176 on Telnet makes the connection clear. The Telnet protocol is based upon the notion of a virtual teletype employing a 7-bit ASCII character set. The primary function of a user Telnet then is to provide the means by which its users can hit all the keys on that virtual teletype. On March 5, 1973, a Telnet protocol standard was defined at UCLA with the publication of two NIC documents, Telnet Protocol Specification NIC 15372 and Telnet Option Specification NIC 15373. Now we will look into some of the Telnet commands. Telnet commands consist of at least two bytes. The first byte is the IAC escape character which is typically byte 255 followed by the byte code. Some of the examples of Telnet commands are open followed by the host name or IP address followed by the port number. Now this will connect to a remote host. The port is optional and defaults to 23, the standard port for Telnet. Next is the close command that will close the current connection. Then there is the send command which will send special sequences to the Telnet server. One of the option is send interrupt which will send the IP sequence. Next there is the status command which will display the status of current Telnet session. And finally the log command followed by the file name which will start logging the Telnet session to a specified file. Now we will see some examples of command byte codes. The first is SE or sub negotiation end whose byte code is 240. That of NOP is 241. That of data mark is 242. That of break is 243. And that of interrupt process is 244. Are you there is 246, erase character is 247, 
erase line is 248, go ahead is 249 and SB which is sub negotiation begin is 250. Now we will see some of the telnet options available. Now these are negotiated between the client and the server. The first one is binary transmission which is used in TN3270 sessions. It will transmit characters as binary data. Next is timing mark which is recognized but has a negative response. It ensures that the previously transmitted data is completely processed. Then there is the extended options list which will extend the telnet option list for 256 other options. Without this option, the telnet option only allows 256 options. Then there is the echo command which is a user changeable command. It will transmit already received echo data characters back to its original sender. Then there is SAK or secure attention key which will establish an environment that is necessary for secure communication between the user and the system. Now we will see the different types of logins available. The first is local login. Now this type of login occurs when a person logs into the local computer. The terminal driver accepts keystrokes that are entered by user when workstation is running a terminal emulator. Here, the terminal driver forwards these characters to the operating system that launches the required application software. Next is remote login. Here the user primarily transmits the keystroke to the terminal driver where the operating system only receives but does not understand characters. These characters are then transferred to the client that converts these characters into NVT or network virtual terminal characters. After conversion, the client converts them and sends them back to TCP IP stack. The text in NVT form travels via the internet till it reaches TCP IP protocol stack on a distant system. The server converts these NVT characters into characters that remote machines can understand. Now we look into how Telnet works. Following are the steps. First, the users will connect to the server using the telnet protocol. For this purpose, a command prompt is entered by following the syntax telnet hostname port. The users execute commands on the server using certain commands into the prompt. For ending a session and logging off, the user terminates a command for telnet. Now we will see some of the issues of telnet. Telnet is vulnerable to network based cyber attacks such as packet sniffing sensitive information including passwords and fingerprinting. Telnet services can also be exploited to leak information about the server such as host names, IP addresses and brand by packet sniffing the banner. This information can then be searched to determine if a Telnet service accepts a connection without authentication. Telnet is also frequently exploited by malware due to being improperly configured. SANS Institute officially the Eskel Institute of Advanced Technologies, recommends that the use of Telnet for remote logins should be discontinued under normal circumstances for the following reasons. The first is, Telnet by default does not encrypt any data sent over the connection, including the passwords and so, it is often feasible to eavesdrop on the communication and use the password later for malicious purposes. Anybody who has access to a router, switch, hub or gateway located on the network between the two hosts where the telnet is being used can intercept the packets passing by and obtain login, password and whatever else is typed with a packet analyzer. The second is most telnet implementations lack authentication. An estimated 22,887 telnet enabled devices found by security researchers not only lacked authentication but also provided unrestricted access to the system. The third being, most telnet authentication mechanisms are vulnerable to being intercepted by man-in-the-middle attacks. Extensions to telnet provide transport layer security, TLS and simple authentication and security layer, SASL authentication that address the above concerns. However, 
most telnet implementation do not support these extensions and they do not address other vulnerabilities such as passing the banner information. Now we look into some of the modern uses of telnet. The telnet client may be used in debugging network services such as SMTP, IRC, HTTP, FTP or POP3 to issue commands to a server and examine the responses. Telnet is commonly used by amateur radio operators for providing public information. Amateur radio, also known as ham radio, is the use of radio frequency spectrum for purposes of non-commercial exchange of messages, wireless experimentation, self-training, private recreation, radio sport, contesting and emergency communication. Now we will see the different steps involved in the telnet configuration on a switch in Cisco Packet Tracer. First of all, we will create the network topology which looks like this with a PC and a switch. Next we will choose a connection type. This is an automatic connection type from the uh, corresponding interface. Then we are setting the IP address. First we set it for the PC which is 192.168.1.1 .1 and on clicking the subnet option it will be filled in automatically. Now this is a class C address which consists of 24 bit network address and an 8 bit local host address. Then we have the switch. So the switch is something that connects multiple devices to create a network. So in the switch we have an option to go into the command line interface. So there we'll press enter. Now this is how the user mode is made known. So if that is a symbol it means you can access only those options available in the user mode. Now if we need to do some global configuration changes we need to type in en or enable. Then the symbol will change into a hash which means you have entered the privilege mode. Now before going into the command line interface for switch, we need to set the type of configuration that needs to be done. So after the privilege mode is given, we will type in conf t which will configure the terminal. So there what we do is we will assign the host name to a switch. Now it will have a default host name. Now I am trying to change it into something like switch which is completely in capital letters. So the command will be type host name followed by switch. After that I am assigning a password to the switch using the command enable secret. So after that I will type in the password I need to give. So this is asked each time you are trying to make in some global configuration change in the switch. Now next what is to be done is the IP address for the interface of the switch is set here. Now for this what we need to do is we need to configure a VLAN interface on the switch. Now VLANs will reduce the incidence of collisions and decrease the number of network resources wasted by acting as LAN segments. Data packets sent from a workstation in a segment are transferred by a bridge or a switch which will not forward collisions but will send on broadcast to every network devices. So we will assign the IP address to the VLAN interface of the switch so that we can telnet the switch from the PC using this address. So the command is after entering the configuration mode in the switch, this is interface VLAN 1. Next what we do is we will configure the interface by giving its IP address and the mask followed by the command no shutdown to turn up the port and finally we give the exit. So it will exit from the interface configuration into the normal configuration of the switch. Next what we do is we need to configure the telnet password for the remote access. Now before that we need to set up the password configuration. So that is to be done on the VTY lines. VTY is virtual terminal. Before we can manage the switch remotely via telnet, we will have to provide the password. Now the telnet access to the switch is allowed only through these virtual terminal lines. We can establish how many ever number of lines we need 
So in this example, I am giving it as 5 telnet connections to the switch at the same time. So for that, the command is line BTY 0 space 4. Next what we do is we are assigning the password. So the command is password followed by the password whatever you are giving it there. Note that this is the password for the telnet connection. The previous password we gave in was for entering the global configuration of the switch. So both are different. Then after giving in the password I will type in the login command to ensure that people will have to log in when they need to access the telnet here. Then I will type the exit so it will exit from the configuration of this virtual terminal. And finally we need to verify if this configuration is correct or not. For this what we do is we need to check the telnet connectivity. So for that we will type in the command telnet followed by the IP address of the VLAN interface for the switch and we need to give in the password. Now the password given there is that of the telnet that is this password is asked there. So after entering that you can enter into the uh, command line interface of the switch. Initially you will be in the user mode which is given by the angle bracket. In order to make in the global configuration changes you need to enter the global configuration mode. For that you need to type en. So if you are able to access the global configuration mode remotely from the PC that of the switch it means that the connection is successful and the telnet setup is done correctly. Now we look into a demo of the same. So for that we need to select the devices for the network. So first we place a PC and then we choose the network device which is the switch. And then we take the automatic connection type to connect them. Then we move on to set up the PC IP address. We go to the desktop option IP configuration and type in the IP. 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask will be automatically filled in which is the class C address. Next we will click on the switch move to its command line interface. We will type in enter and this is the user mode. Now we need to enter the global configuration mode for that we type en and hash is the symbol now. Now we give the conf t command it entered into the configuration mode. Next what we do is we will change the host name. You can see the host name was S followed by the rest of the letters in small letter. After giving the host name it has changed into that corresponding name with all the letters in caps lock. Next we will type in the password for which it is enable secret and the password is password. Then next we need to set up the VLAN interface that is interface VLAN 1 and it will enter into the configuration mode for that interface then we will type in the address for the interface and the subnet mask the address being 192.168.1.2 after that we give the option of no shutdown means the port should always be up then if we give in uh, the command exit it will exa exit from the configuration mode of that interface. Next what we do is we need to set up the telnet option. For that we need to set up the line BTY04 that is setting up 5 connections to the telnet to the switch at the same time and setting up its password is password followed by the password given which is password 1 here. Then we give login which means people will have to log in to access the switch remotely. Then giving exit will exit from the uh, configuration of VTY lines. Now we'll check if the setup is right or not. We'll go to the desktop and go into the command prompt and there we'll type in telnet and the IP of the interface 192.168.1.2 and they are asking for the password. The password here is password1 that is a password for telnet. After that you have entered the user mode 
now you are giving the en option to enter into the global configuration mode again it it will ask for the password where the password is password and you can see it has finally entered the global section we saw how uh, telnet configuration on a switch is done now we'll see how it is done on a router these steps are almost the same so first of all we'll build in the network topology which will have a pc and a router then we'll set up the pc and router and they'll be connected using a copper straight through wire like this then we are setting up the connection between the interface fast ethernet 0 and gig ethernet 000 of uh, pc and the router respectively then we set the ip of PC as 192.168.1.2 as we already saw in the previous slides the subnet will be filled in automatically next we need to set the default gateway in the same option where we did the IP configuration so there the IP will be set as 192.168.1.1 that will be the IP of the router which we will be setting up after some time then what we do is the PC configuration is done. Next we move on to the router. There we'll go to the command line interface and we are entering the initial configuration for the router. So there we'll type the option N. Then we enter into the user mode which is seen using this symbol. Now if we are to move to the global configuration mode we need to type the command EN after which we'll enter into the privilege mode. Then we need to start the configuration. What we do is we need to type the command conf space t. After that, we are assigning the host name for the router. So the host name is router in caps lock. So this command is given. After that, the router will be given a password using the command enable secret password on the router. And the password given is router. After that, we need to configure the IP addresses on the interface of the router. The configuration on PC is already done. So the interface of the router that we are going to choose is G0 slash 0 slash 0. So we need to access the interface using the command INT G0 slash 0 slash 0. After that, we need to set up the IP address and the mask. IP address is 1.1. After that, we give the command no shutdown it means the port needs to be activated throughout then we'll exit from the interface configuration after that we are setting up telnet by setting up the virtual terminal here we are planning to have six connections available as telnet to the router at the same time so the range will be 0 to 5 so the command is line vty 0 space 5 after that what we do is we'll configure the telnet password using the command password so the uh, password here is router1 then we give the command login which means each time a user is trying to telnet to the router through a remote machine he or she needs to give the password so after that we give exit twice one will exit from the telnet configuration and other will exit from the command line interface of the router after that we need to check if the configuration is right or not we go to the desktop, take the command prompt and type in the uh, IP address of the router. That is the gateway address uh, preceding the telnet command. Then we give the password. After that, we are entering into the uh, user mode of the router. There, if you give the password uh, after typing in EN, you can enter the privilege mode. And if this is done, it means the telnet setup in router is done successfully. Now we will see a demo of the same. Here we are choosing the PC and we are choosing the router from the network devices and we are connecting them using the copper straight through wire connection from the fast ethernet 0 to gig ethernet 0 port. Then in the PC we go into the desktop IP configuration and type in the IP address of PC which is 192.168.1.2 and the mask is filled in automatically. Here the default gateway will be the IP that we are going to set on the router that is 192.168.1.1. Now the PC configuration is complete. We move on to the 
router. There we'll go and click into the command line interface of it. We type in n since we are giving the initial configuration. After that, we move into the user mode. To enter the privilege mode, we'll type en. And to start the global configuration, we type in the command conf t. Then what we do is we'll change the host name of router. So host name followed by router in caps lock. Now the host name has changed. For that we assign a password using the command enable secret followed by the password which is router. Then after that we will type in the command to access the interface of the router just int g0 slash 0 slash 0 after entering the interface we will set up the IP address and the mask for it the IP address is 192.168.1.1 and its mask is 255.255.255.0 then we give the command no shutdown which means the port has to be active throughout and we give the exit command which will exit the interface configuration. Now we will set up the telnet section where we will send up the virtual terminal which is line VTY 6 connections so 0 to 5 ok. Here we are doing it for 5 connections so we are setting it as 0 to 4. Then we are setting up the password for the telnet which is password router1. Then we give the login option so that each one accessing the telnet will need to log in before getting the telnet connection. And we give exit, it will exit from the VTY configuration. If, if we give exit again, you will exit from the command line interface. Now we are going to test the connectivity. For that we go to the PC and enter the command prompt. Type in telnet to the IP of the router 192.168.1.1. We'll ask in for a password which is router1. That is a password for telnet. After that if it is correct we'll enter into the user mode. To enter the privilege mode we type in en and the corresponding password which is router. Now we have entered the privilege mode. That was how Telnet is set in a router using Cisco Packet Tracer. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.